that would be good. <laughs> Morning, everybody. <coughs> Excuse me. We are excited to be here on a Tuesday. Is it Tuesday? <laughs> yes, it's Tuesday. Yes. <laughs> I forget what day it is all the time these oh, days. Me too. Me too. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, when things aren't normal, it, you don't even remember what day it is. But anyway, so I forget that sometimes, but I believe it's a Tuesday, and we're thankful that you're with us on, to, on our conversation today on Tuesday. We're going back to Matthew 16 in a little bit. Um, I, I don't know if any of you uh, want to respond on what we were talking about yesterday um, with um, the coronavirus and Dr. Gold and what she had to say about um, – the safety of coronavirus and how things have been, things have been um, uh, exaggerated to a negative degree. Uh, she she really has some incredible things to say about coronavirus and that kind of stuff. I have I've gotten some things about that, and I just wanted to share one of the things that I got with you. Why coronavirus was so effective for people? I figure that, uh, <clears throat> that out. Um, it, it's interesting because. Um, it's not the hydroxychloroquine that makes you well. It's the zinc that makes you well. And so when they mix hydroxychloroquine with zinc, somehow the without the hydroxychloroquine, the zinc can't get into the cells that it needs to get into to uh, take care of this virus in your body, the coronavirus. But if you take hydroxychloroquine, it opens up those cells to receive the zinc. Okay. And so when the, when it receives the zinc, then your body becomes uh, better. It gets what better fast. And it, and so the, the, your cells need zinc to fight off the hydro to fight off the Corona 19. Obviously, you know, that's what people would surmise. But anyway, that's that's what I found out. And so to take the hydroxychloroquine off the market for people within the first few days after receipt, after getting the, the virus or symptoms from the virus, they can give them all the zinc and all the stuff they want to. But the cells don't receive the medication and therefore it becomes difficult for them to get better faster. So that's 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 why it, it's such an important drug. And uh, anyway, I just thought that was a very interesting conversation. And uh, I thought maybe you guys would like to do your, do your own research on it and figure it out and see what you think about it. But anyway, that's where we're at with that. Also, we have um, some news about the state of California, not Riverside County. Billy was telling me that uh, that the beach, you know, Orange County and in San Diego, they're all open up. Everybody's open up. They're going to well, start yeah. person. They're, and, they're off the watch list. Yeah. San Diego County and Orange County. Yeah, so that means they're going to open up schools yep. in person, which I think is amazing. That's an incredible thing. Um, it, it, here in Washington, they're they're all out, all out, just online for the first while. So we'll see. But anyway, so if you wanna if you wanna look through some things in your life and and uh, look through look through what you would believe and not believe about about how our country's doing and, and about maybe you might think it's a conspiracy theory about how things are going on, especially with coronavirus and everything else. Uh, it, it's very interesting for you to do that. It's very interesting for you to try to figure out where we're at in the world. And the reason I think that it's my, it might be helpful for us to unpack some of that, like we did today, we're not going to go into it anymore, but to unpack some of that and maybe, maybe um, kind of arouse some curiosity for that is because we, we're living in this world and this world really needs to know Christ. And I think this is what's happening. And, I, and I'm gonna say this to you and, and we'll see if it comes to, to fruition or if it comes true or not, but this is what I believe is gonna happen. I believe the, the chasm is getting wider and wider and wider between the righteous and the unrighteous. And I believe God, and I've said this before, I believe God is, is kind of sweeping through the church and the people in the church that are just the hanger honors or the people that just come are going to either get very, very interested in what God has for them, or we won't see them anymore. Uh, we'll be very sad, but I think, I think God is weeding out some of those, some of those people and some of those things. I think he's made the, the church a pure place. And I don't think that we're going to go back to church as normal when we get to go back. I think people are going to are going to go back with an understanding that they need to be really excited about Christ or not be involved, which is kind of a sad thing, really, because you want 
even the hanger honors to be around because you hope they'll become really excited. But but I but I believe that they I believe that people are really going to 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 take seriously the gospel of Jesus Christ and take seriously their relationship with Christ. And I think that's going to start happening all, all, all across the world. And um, when that happens, there's going to become a great revival. So there's going to be a great revival. And that great revival is one of the things that I think is supposed to happen when I read through Revelation and other places. I think there's supposed to be a great revival right before the second coming of Christ. And I think we're, we're in that place. I think we're we're in a place where we're going to see this amazing revival. We can't make it happen. People have been trying to make this great revival happen forever because they want Jesus to come. So they think they can manufacture these signs of the times to, so that Jesus will come back like the red heifer, like they're trying to make a red heifer in Israel right. is one of them. But anyway, we can go on and talk about that. That's just another one of those things. And a great revival is one of those things. We can't make it happen, but the Lord can make it happen in his time. And I think that's what we're discovering. I think God's unfolding this timeline for us. And I think there's going to be a great revival. And I think there are going to be many people who are going to come to Christ. And I think they're going to be very serious about him because if there's just this great divide between people who, um, people who, uh, want to know Christ and are serious about him and people who are just curious. <laughs> I think the curi curiosity seekers uh, probably aren't going to stay around very long. So, so you think what, um, we're in a hot and cold season where they're lukewarm or going away? Yeah, yeah, that's a great way to say it. Yeah, I think that's where we're coming to. Um, yeah, and I think people, that people are going to put their flag in the sand and say, this is what I believe in this strongly, good yeah, or yeah. bad. Yeah, I think so. Well, you know what? I didn't even think I didn't even connect the two till till just when you said that. Didn't your sister write something that was really good? Did, do you mind reading? That? I mean, is that that's really good? Billy was sharing something with me this morning, and I, I I didn't even connect them with the two. But I think that's that's kind of the the sentiment, isn't it? What your sister wrote or not? About the uh, many many Christians believe the highest calling God has placed on us yeah. is to be nice. Yeah, these Christians are wrong. God has not called us to be nice. Rather, he has called us to be good. Here's the difference. Nice people never confront evil. Good people do. Yeah. Jesus wasn't nice. He was kind. He was compassionate. He was caring. But he was unbending and unflinching when it came to standing for the truth. And it yeah. cost him his life. Yeah. I think that's where we're coming to, that attitude. It's like, you know what? And, and, and even politically, I, I, I read something this morning, early this morning that I, I'll share with you. Even politically, I start, we're starting to see this happen. There was a pollster that was, was watching the RNC because the Republican convention is on right now. And um, <laughs> watching all of the different speeches, very personal speeches from the RNC. And the RNC and the DNC, the DNC's already had their convention, the Democrat Party. And now the Republican Party is having its convention virtually. Um, but there was a pollster that was watching, you know, how independents, because they got some independents together and they were watching in real time how independent the people who were called themselves independents, not Republicans or Democrats, how they were swaying to one side or the other during these speeches. And even the independents are giving the speeches A's and B's from the Republicans, a, a grade of A and B. And, and, and that's that's very interesting because that means they're saying, yeah, you know what? I like this conversation about the truth. I like this conversation about this is because people know when they see something, if it's right or wrong. They know when they see people burning down cities that it's not OK. You right. know, people know that. And so there's there's this gap is becoming wider and wider and wider. And there's going to be this group of people who's going to be many, maybe the maybe the majority who are going to say, it's okay to burn down cities. It's fine. You know, we have a problem in the world. And if this is how we solve it, this is how we solve it. And, but independents in the United States don't believe that. So they're swaying over to the Republican side, according to this pollster. Well, who knows if that's going to stay that way or not. I'm, I don't know anything about that. But, but, it, but I'm telling you, this conversation about the truth and speaking the truth is is really really what we're supposed to be doing and it's very important for us today to think that through and see how that affects our lives and how we live our lives with the truth 
we can no longer straddle the fence. <laughs> we have, we, we, we it, it's, it, I think your sister's correct. It's not about being nice. It's about being kind, but it's about being truthful. And, and Jesus even says it like this. He says, when there's a brother or sister caught in sin, you're supposed to restore them back to Christ gently, gently. Yeah, you have to be, you have to be gentle with them, but you have to restore them. And the only way restoration happens is by telling someone the truth of Christ. So anyway, <clears throat> so that I, I just think we're in that position. I think we're in that place. And I think you're going to see that become wider and wider and wider, especially um, as some of these conversations come out about really what's going on with COVID-19 and really what's happening. I guess I'm really way behind the eight ball in that. I mean, there's a lot of, there've been a lot of conversations about that. that yeah. I, I was telling you there was a, um, a similar doctor who was debunked. They, 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 she was debunked. I don't know if it was literally debunked, but she, she like had a bone to pick, but she was saying the same thing like three months ago, four months ago. Yeah. About this. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, Dr. Gold is the doctor we talked about yesterday. If you want to look her up. Um, and we looked at that AFLDS. It does. Billy sent this to me, and I looked it up too. It, it's not LDS Latter Day Saints. It's uh, American Frontline Doctors. Yeah, Frontline Doctors. Yeah, America's Frontline Doctors. Yeah. dot com. So it's it, so if you want to look up some of that conversation, please go please go look it up and to see if you like it and see what it says to you. So anyway, those are the things I'm concerned about today. That we are part of the people who say, okay, it's time for me to put you know put my, my flag in the ground and say, this is who I am. This is my stance. And um, I love you and I'm going to be gentle with you, but I, I'm going to tell you the truth. <laughs> right. this, is, this is, this is who I am. And I, cause I, I think that's where we're at in. And I think that's what God wants from us. And he's always, by the way, he's always wanted that from us. We had, we just became very, very political in the church. And we and we honored politics many in many ways the, the politics of political correctness. We honored that over the truth of Christ. Yes, and I, and I think that that's coming to, it's coming to blows with the truth. <laughs> it's going to crash into the truth. I don't right. know. What, what, what do you think, Billy? I mean, well, they'll still call themselves churches, but yeah, sure. They, sure. but they'll they'll be leaning way politically. It'll what they'll have they'll have a pinch of salt a pinch of sugar you know bippity boppity boo they'll have a pinch of jesus <laughs> but it won't be his church right and, right and what i think about people in general most people are lukewarm about everything we were in san diego and on most lawns you would see uh black lives matter posters or right. we believe this and that it's just a sign they don't do anything they still live in their million dollar homes and they're just mm -hmm. saying this is what we believe well, in the church, we don't want to be that way. We don't want to put a cross around our neck. We don't want to carry a Bible and walk and say, "I go to the I go to the church." Rick's my pastor, and do nothing about it. We and what we do is we pray. We sh we need, we need to pray, have a relationship with the Lord, and He leads you to people through the Holy Spirit that you 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 open your mouth, you speak about Christ, and then you give a cup of cold water, and then you help. Uh, right. You help the church restart. You help. You know, I I I've thought about this. The, I'm not a Christian who believes that um, the Bible doesn't. Works don't matter. But we still do work. You know, James says, show me your faith. I'll show you my work. Show me, you know, I'll show you my faith by my works. Right. So um, Christians should really be saying in this time four words. What can I do? Right, right, right. What can I do? Yeah. And, uh, and, and a different answer. You should, we all should pray. And we all want to gather together again. But what can I do? You know, th that's an interesting comment, Billy, because remember in the 70s when, when we I got saved in that revival that swept through the United States. Yeah, the, the Jesus Testament, movement. The Jesus movement. I was I called myself a Jesus freak. I didn't, and I didn't give a rip if you liked it or not. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> that's who I was. Right. I was. And I took my Bible. I was I was this really not nice kid. And I started became a Christian. And I I I took my Bible every day to school. And I walked in the only book I carried. I never read it. <laughs> I, it I didn't read, <laughs> but, but I took my Bible because I wanted people to know that I was a Christian. And I didn't care if they, I wanted them to know. It was like, mm -hmm. you know, you want to fight with me about it? Great. I want you, I want you to know I'm a Christian. So, <laughs> so you and know. you reached people that yeah. other people couldn't reach. Yeah. You, you yeah, reached yeah. some of the gangbangers, I'm sure, yeah. and some yeah. of the, right? Well, some of the, yeah, some of the people the that were, yeah, 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 yeah. So anyway, I, I, that's who I was, but, but that's what I think when you become, if, when you really become hot for Christ, I think, I think you're You, you are going to say, God, what should I do? And instantly 
You, I mean, there's just things are going to open up for you. God's going to open up avenues of, of ministry and things are going to happen. And, and, and because you want, you have a desire in your heart to live for him. And so he's going to, he's going to bring things to you and, and it's going to be, it's going to be amazing. And you, and it's not going to, it might not be, let's teach a Sunday school class or let's greet right. the church. I mean, those are fine things. Or but, let's help give found out food boxes. You yeah, know, yeah, not, yeah, not always yeah. that. No. Yeah. Yeah. It's not just the normal. It's, this is going to be, I want you to go to the nursing home next to the church and I want you to share the gospel of Christ. Or I want right. you to, I want you to go stand in front of Rite Aid next to the church and on Sunday morning. And I want you to invite the people to come to church that are going into Rite Aid's parking lot. Say, Hey, I got to go. Or I want, see, th this is, this is what I can see happening. Let me just tell you, this is really exciting. I have a friend, his name is Kurt Salerno. I love Kurt. Anyway, he's a great brother in Christ and, and he loves the homeless people. He goes and, and hangs out with them all the time. He's written a book about it. He's, he's amazing. But anyway, and he and I went to college together. So anyway, this is what Kurt, Kurt started a church. And in, in a year he had 2000 people in his church. In Fresno, California. You know how he did it? Every morning before church, he would get up and he would walk outside and he would go to the homeless camps or go to the, where people were at coffee shops or whatever. And he would start a conversation and say, man, I know this great church. Would you like to go with me? And he didn't tell him he was a pastor. He said, would you like to go with me? And he would walk them to the church walk with them and they would say yeah sure let's go so he'd make for and he'd walk with them and he filled up his church with 2000 people in one year and then there was some political stuff in the church and he just said ah he, he said i you know god's calling me to do something else and he walked away from it let somebody else have it that you know how people kind of get in, you know yeah. lost about things yeah. he just said forget it you can have it i'll leave <laughs> and he left <laughs> he didn't care <laughs> You know, which is really cool in itself, right? <laughs> but that's how that I could see us doing that. I could see I could see people, um, you know, going on the street corners and say, "Man, I have this great church," and bringing homeless people because there's a lot of them around our church, right? Oh yeah, bringing them in. And the most amazing thing is, not only would they come, but they would. I could see the people that were there loving on them. You know, and not being mad because they didn't smell so good, or not and being, also you know, having them be transformed. Yes, with God, yeah. you know, having them accept Christ. Yes, yeah. So that's the kind of stuff. It, wouldn't that be awesome? I think God is ready for us to do those kinds of things. Now, maybe not that exactly. No, I know, but yeah. but well, yeah, what we should still have that thing like, what can I do today instead yeah. of yeah. Uh, yeah. what what can the church do for me, or mm -hmm. what can God do for me? What can I do? You talk about taking that Bible to school. You know, I always had a Bible. I was always a Christian once I got saved. I mean, once I started teaching, I was saved. So I had a Bible on my desk and I heard a guy cool. talk about that. He goes, he says, you want to start a conversation, bring a Bible to the restaurant you go to and put it right down on the table. He said, you'll see social distancing at six feet. That waiter will come by and go, whoa, a Bible. Oh, no. because people don't want to be reminded of their sin or where they know that they're not right with God. Yeah. And the Bible will keep people six feet apart. That's yeah. right. You don't need a mask or you don't need anything. Just throw that Bible down. Just get a Bible down and nobody will talk to you. No, they're all going to stay away from you. Yeah, that's true. Well, let's try it, folks. You never know what I'm going to do, you know. <laughs> and the people that want to talk to you are going to be ripe for the gospel of Christ. Yeah. So yeah. that's I can say, be. is that a Bible? Uh, what are you? What do you believe? <laughs> yeah. And especially in today's, in today's environment, people may want to know what mm -hmm. that Bible says. Right. Maybe know? the first thing out of their mouth will be, do you think these are the end times? It, yeah. Yeah. And, the, and your, answer, your answer can always be yes. Yes. You know why? Because if the end times are a thousand years from now or next week or to this afternoon, <laughs> nobody knows, right? Right. It, it, it's the end times because you're a day right. closer today than you were yesterday. <laughs> so you're at, you're, you're at the end. <laughs> well, I would always tell kids, I said, this is the last day of planet earth. Yeah. So far. You made it farther than Abraham Lincoln and Socrates. You're here on the last day the planet's been here. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And that's true. <laughs> so, of course, we're in the end times. Yeah. yeah. So, anyway, but I, I know they mean something different than that. But you could really say yes. A thousand years a day and a day is a thousand years. Yeah. You know, I, you, met, you mentioned the red heifer. I thought the Jews, you know, said, where's Moses? He's been on this mountain. What was it, 40 days or something? And where yeah. is he? And we say the same thing about Jesus. Where is he? You know, where is he? And yeah. We need to be patient and understand his time frame is diff different than ours. And in the meantime, live as if he's coming back 
this afternoon or today, right. this morning. Right. Well, and he might. He might. In fact, it would be awesome if he'd just show up and just take over this project. What is that uh, <laughs> word? Maranatha, right? Is that what it means, come yeah. now? Yeah. 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 Maranatha. The Ecclesia, mm -hmm. the church and the coming of Christ. Anyway, <laughs> the gathering together of the body of Christ, and we're just going to gather together in the Catholic church, not the Roman Catholic church, but the universal church, and we're going we're gonna to be this great, wonderful, authoritative word of God in this world that needs us, and we're going to have some amazing things until he comes again. So, yeah, that's who mm -hmm. we are. We're the yep. fellowship of believers, priesthood of believers. Anyway, let's pray. Thank you, Father, for today. Thank you for all the people that have that have uh, tuned in to hang out with us this morning and and uh, go do this Bible study. We thank you, Jesus, for your Holy Spirit. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for coming and being with us today and ministering to us and changing our lives. We ask God that you would help us to burn hot. Let our church be that church that is so excited about you that is so open, as Billy says, God, what can we do today? Well, you know, Open an avenue of ministry for me today. Let us be an army of those kinds of people, Lord Jesus. Let us not return to a, a, a sanctuary and just go back to the way that things were, just kind of hanging out and asking, what's the church going to do for me? Lord, let us be the priesthood of believers. Let us say, God, here I am. Use me up today. We thank you for that, Lord God. I thank you for Billy's sister who who either wrote that or found that or whatever, but for communicating that, that with us. Lord, I just am so grateful for her message to us today that, you know, you want us to be truthful and honest and kind, but we don't have to be tolerant of non-truth. I thank you for that today, Lord. I ask that you would guide us and direct us into this Bible study, that you would transform our lives with it. We thank you, Jesus, for all the goodness and all the holiness and all the power and authority that you bring, Lord God, to this time today. And Holy Spirit, we open ourselves up to you and we ask that John 14, 26, you will teach us all things and bring all things to our remembrance, will be our guide this morning. Teach us, Holy Spirit, today and transform our lives. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Thank you, Father. Uh, yes, Lord, I agree with that prayer. And as we open um, Matthew 16 now, I pray that your Holy Spirit would teach us. And especially the, the, as it comes to the authority that you've given us um, here on earth, that we would take that seriously. And we would uh, these words would come alive for us, especially in this uh, environment that we have right now. And I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. There, there are some of you who have asked for prayer this morning, and um, we don't want to... Uh, we don't want to leave you out today. So um, if you have asked for prayer, we'll try to gather up those those prayer requests and we'll pray for you. Yeah, I don't see any on here. Yeah, yeah. Or we on, just, on the biz. Okay. Okay. Just if we just have some, if you want us to pray for you, we we will pray for you today if you put yeah. those things up. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't I didn't know of any new prayer requests either today. So yeah. All right, Billy, we're going into uh the conversation of Jesus that we'd started yesterday. Right. <clears throat> but we're coming into a part of it that has been um, kind of controversial in the church, this conversation, because people aren't sure what it really means. Right. And so it's kind of going to kind of be fun to open it up and see what it, what it means and kind of see if we can decipher uh, with the Holy Spirit's leading today, understand what it really means and know what we're supposed to do with it and how we're supposed to allow it, affect, allow it and let it affect our lives. But uh, we got to probably start back up where to, to give it a little bit of context back up to verse 10 or not. What do you think? In well, I, was think, I was thinking uh, 15. Okay, with, let's start there. Who do you say that I am? Yeah, yeah. that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, the, the, Jesus is, through this whole chapter here, Jesus is expressing him, expressing to, to those around him the, the idea that he is who he is, and he wants them to define that. And so they're defining it. And that's, that's what Peter, in verse 15, that's what's asked here. Um, it says, Peter explains, uh, Peter said, explain the parable to us. Oh, uh, oh the, you want to go back to the 11, huh? Yeah, well, that's verse 15, isn't it? No, 15 oh. is. He, yeah, 15 oh. is, who do you say I am? 
but you know what? I'm I keep doing this. I got 16 right at the very bottom of my page, and I keep and going. You can't, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I went to the wrong chapter, and I'm thinking, wait a minute, that's not. That's not okay, ah, there you go. Uh, and what about you? There you go. That's where I'm looking for. I'm thinking, why is this not making sense to me? <laughs> no, I'm in the wrong chapter. <laughs> what? Uh, but what about you? He asked. Who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And we talked about that yesterday, about Jesus being the Christ, the son of the living God. And Peter got it. And Peter Peter finally got it. Now, there are other people who, who had this before Peter had it and, uh, the, and the other disciples. One of them was way back in the fifth chapter with the, with the person who had leprosy. And right. knelt down before Christ, and he called, and he called them that. the The demons had it. Yeah, I was going to say the demons had it. <laughs> had yeah, had the it. demons knew about who Jesus was. They had known him for since they they were created. They knew yep, who yep. he was. Uh, they created as angels, and then were cast out of heaven. They, and they knew his power. They knew created him. by him. Yeah, created by him, and, and cast out. Him. Him. Yep. Yeah. And 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 judged by him as well. Mm -hmm. so, That's right. So, yeah. So he so he has, you know, everybody everybody kind of in their own way and in their own time realized who Jesus was. Uh, that so far that we're reading, but now except some of the Pharisees and Sadducees, they didn't quite buy into it. Either you bought into him, or you just you, you thought he was of Satan. I mean, you know, you, there was kind of no middle ground here either. Right. No. <laughs> and so here's 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 Peter. Uh, but what about you? He says, and he asks, who do you, Jesus is asking Peter, who do you say I am? And Simon Peter answered, you are the Christ, which Christ is means the Messiah, the one to come to forgive sins. That's who John the Baptist said when he saw Jesus, here comes the Messiah, the one who's going to forgive the sins of the world. And then the son of the living God, which means that he, Peter understood that he was not just the Messiah, but that he was God himself. And those two things are very important for us to understand about Jesus. And so this is what Jesus says to Peter because of that conversation. Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. So see, if you didn't understand what had happened with Peter earlier, you wouldn't know why Jesus was bestowing this blessing on him. He said, blessed are you, son, uh, you Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by men. What was not revealed? Well, the conversation about who Jesus was was not revealed by man, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not over, overcome it. Now, that's where we stopped yesterday. We talked about the gates of Hades, and we talked about what that means. And Hades is a real place. Uh, it's, it, you know, Billy sh talked about this yesterday. The Old Testament Hebrew word is shoal. The New Testament, the New Testament Greek word is Hades. And it's a place for... It's a holding place for both the righteous and the unrighteous until Christ comes again. And it's, it's, a, it's a space. And like, like you know, when, when Jesus was on the cross and he looked to one of the thieves and said, today you'll be with me in paradise. That's the holding place for people until Jesus comes again. Um, Abraham and, and uh, is there. And you remember the story? Abraham, of Abraham's Christ, bosom, yeah. And Abraham's bosom, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You remember the story of Lazarus and, and the rich man and Lazarus went to and he was in Abraham's bosom in this place called Hades. That's what you know. And that's found in Luke 15, I believe. Anyway, so that conversation is is it's a holding place between and it has both the righteous and the unrighteous. They're separated. They're not in the same area. They're separated and there's a chasm between the two. And you can't cross over the chasm is what it talks about in Luke. So I, I just want to give you that understanding of that's what he's talking about. But in here, he's talking about this Hades. He's talking about the powers of hell will not prevail against the church. Well, he, he, he well, and 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 just in you got you got this in high school. Maybe you, you didn't under, remember it or something. But Hades is act is a place with Pluto, who's a who's a deity who mm -hmm. grabs Persephone and he brings her down there. Right. And then and then there's no flowers. There's no spring. And right. so he makes an agreement with Zeus. I'll let her up every springtime. And that's why the spring, they explain to me, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a myth. That's all it is. That's what the Greeks called Hades. There was that kind of Greek mythology, Hades. It could also mean death here. I think the Jews, when they talk about Sheol, are talking about death. And Jesus is talking to Jews. He's saying, I'm going to build my church on this rock, on this big statement that I'm, G I'm God. And not even death will overcome that. Because he's going to die. And he's going to overcome sin, death, and the grave. 
and we're going to die, but we're not going to die the second death. So you can look at it either way. It is a real place. Sheol is a real place, but death is a real thing too. Right, right. Well, and 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 in in, in <laughs> if you go back to some of your um, different translations, they will they will translate this as hell. They won't translate yeah. it as Hades, right? Because of what Billy. But I don't think. Yeah, we 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 agree that's not a good translation. Yeah, yeah that's that's not the and, and it's not a good translation because there are three words that mean that are translated hell, and they all right. mean a different thing, and that's why that's why they use the Greek term Hades here because it means something, and it does mean what Billy said. It's a place. It's a specific place, but it's also it it also represents death. Death will not overcome it or Satan, because l l let me tell you why that means death won't overcome it. That means Satan won't overcome it. Let me tell you why I mean why I say that, because the Bible says that the wages of sin is death. So why does death come into the world? Death comes into the world through sin. Yeah. That's why it comes. That's why we didn't have death until we had sin. So now we have sin and the result of sin is death. The consequence of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. That's all found in Romans. And so 633 and 333 in there and 333. So it says Hades will not overcome it. So Hades, even death itself or the power of Satan cannot overcome what God is going to build the church. And, and, it, and it says the gates of Hades. Yeah, so that's, yeah. There was a dog there called Cerberus who, who guard yeah. the gates. They're not keeping anyone from getting in. They're keeping people from getting out. Right. And when you die, like right. Jesus right. did the tomb, the gates will not hold you there. Right. Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's de it, yeah, death is a better uh, translation by far there for Hades. Yeah. And, um, and, and by the way, the law, we talk about sin, like people say, well, what is sin? Well, the law, without the law, there is no sin. The law gives birth to sin. Right. So if I don't say don't, don't, don't trespass and you trespass, you didn't break the law, you're not going to die. But one, you didn't know. Yeah. You, there is no law. But if there's a law about trespassing or a law about adultery and you break it, now that's called sin and you're going to die. And we've all sinned and we deserve death. Right. So just to wrap up that Roman road thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. The, 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 thank you. The, the concept of Hades here is important to understand because you have to you have to um, determine which idea of Hades is being shared with you when you right. read it. So you need to understand it fully to understand if it's talking about the place or if it's talking about Satan's evil or if it's talking about death. Well, I think it's talking about both and, and be yeah. fine because yeah. um, when you accept Christ uh, as your Lord and Savior, which Jesus, which Peter did, Peter said, you're, G you're right. God. Yeah, yeah. Then nothing's going to stand. You know, I'll yeah. go to Romans 8 and say, no created thing will right. separate me. Right, right. So, so anyway, that's really Either. kind of an important concept that you need to get through. It, but lots of people have asked me about the Hades conversation, and that's why I want you to want you to have a little more understanding yeah. of what it is, and then you can determine what it's what what the context is telling you that it's talking about. And I, I agree with Billy. The context here is is a context not well, of not of. Go ahead. Well, I'm saying the only danger yeah. is the mythology. The only danger is they think it's Dante's Inferno. It's right. not Dante's Inferno. It's not right. that. And it could be the actual Abraham's bosom uh, thing, and right. it could be it could be both. Right. But yeah, don't go the other way and put right. Cerberus out there with all that, you know. Right. And and the reason that that's an important conversation is because you have to remember where Jesus is when he's having this conversation. Yeah. Yeah. But he's having it with Peter, not with everybody else. True, so, but he's in the Gentile yeah. region. But he's in a Gentile region, and and they there's a lot of that mythology that they they're. they're involved in those what people. did paul say paul says that he uh when he's with the greeks he's a greek when he's with the uh, he's so that he uh, he's everything that so they might save some or something yeah, he, like that so, so he understands them yeah, he, yeah. and this is uh, i i agree with pastors doing this where you know your audience and jesus knows his audience here yeah yeah if, right. were, if he were surrounded by pharisees he'd be talking about sheol and lots of different yeah the old languages. testament yeah the old yes, testament yes, yes yeah, yeah. yeah. So I will in this. So then he says in verse 19, he says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Well, he's talking to Peter. And, and so this is why people think Peter is at the gates, at the pearly gates, letting you in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, you hear that all the time, right? You're going to meet Peter at the pearly gates, right? Yeah. So I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Um, 
Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Well, let's 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 talk here a, a bit about what it can't be. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay? Because if, if you look at what this can't be, then it narrows down the possibilities of what it can be, right? Okay. Okay. Agreed. So let's talk about what this can't be. It can't be Peter is the one who's telling you if you can come to heaven or not. It can't be that. Because it doesn't fit with scripture. It doesn't fit with scripture if you believe that. So for example, how do you know that you're a Christian and how do you know that you have eternal life? For God so loved the world, right? The, the most famous scripture that probably is on the earth today and been, been the most famous scripture for years and years and years, for decades. John three sixteen. for God so loved the world that whosoever believeth in him, right? So believe it's got nothing know. to do with Peter. And, and also whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. saved. Right. Yeah. Truly, truly I say unto you, this is John 6, 47 is another one. Truly, truly I say unto you, he who believes has eternal life. So this can't. Well, Peter's nowhere in there, right? In those yeah, verses. Yeah, yeah. Peter's not in those verses. So, so, so the reality is it can't be that Jesus is telling Peter, to telling Peter, well, whoever you let in will be let in. Whoever you keep out will have to stay out. That's not what it's saying at all. It can't be that because it doesn't fit with the rest of scripture. Uh, what, what else can't it be? It, 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 go ahead. It can't be the, I don't think it can be the church either. I don't think the church decides who goes to heaven or who doesn't. Well, that's, that's, that that's coming from you because of the Roman Catholic. Well, ex cathedra, Roman tell them, tell them about it. Yeah, you know. Yeah, that's. They believe, I don't, they believe that Peter's the first pope. Yes, they do. They believe that Peter was the first pope, and which is interesting because there were two papacies at one time: one in Paris and one in one in Rome. So anyway, um, it, because they were fighting over. It. But the the concept of ex cathedra is what Billy's talking about, and that concept of ex cathedra is really interesting. Ex cathedra means set in the chair <laughs> and literally setting in a chair. And what that means is that if the Pope, even today, if the Pope sets in the chair that is designated, then the Holy Spirit will speak to him. And the words that he speaks, it's only he, it's not a she, the word that he, the Pope is only a male. The, the, the word the word that he speaks is now equivalent because it's spoken from that chair ex cathedra right. it's spoken from there now it is in in that place at, and, and forever will be equivalent to the words of scripture that's that's a that's a problem for some of us because we believe that and I was I used to be Roman Catholic I understood I went to a Catholic seminary a Jesuit seminary I mean I understand Catholic theology pretty well. And so <laughs> I'm not saying I understand it all, but I understand some of it pretty well. And so this concept of ex cathedra is difficult because the Bible says that you're in the very last thing of the of revelation, it says that you're not supposed to subtract or add to the word of God. And so, and so if that ever happened, if ex cathedra happened, then that would be a huge problem. And so, also, aren't we all priests? We're all kings We're and priests. all priests are the believers, is according to Peter when he talks, and and that goes back to this conversation too, because that's talking about Jesus being the capstone, which means that when yeah, Jesus the is up yeah. on yeah, the cornerstone, the capstone, when when you are same thing, when you are, when you are, um, Jesus said you're gonna, I'm gonna build my church on you, and when you're that person, that doesn't mean that. That doesn't mean that Peter is the one they build the church on. It means that Jesus is the one they build the church on. And Peter is one of the first stones to be put in place as the church. Yeah. So that's what that's talking and about. And it's built on that statement. If, you know, for <laughs> instance, <laughs> Judas is not one of the stones because Judas clearly didn't believe he was the son of, you know, who he was. Right. right. Yeah, I don't think you'd reject. Well, I don't know if Judas believed. You know, when Jesus, now this is after his resurrection. In John 20, 23, uh -huh. he repeats this thing. He commissions mm -hmm. the 12. He breathes the Holy Spirit on them. So this is new. This isn't the Acts chapter 2, the tongue right. of fire, but he breathes the Holy Spirit. And he says, if you forgive the sins of any, they're forgiven them. If you right. retain the sin of any, their sins retained. So right. that's, that's, pretty loose, that's pretty heavy to the apostles right. there. Well, and it, but, but that's also the same conversation that says you'll be forgiven the way you you forgive okay. in your prayer. It's right. also the same concept as that. So so anyway, here the message is 
The we don't want to legalize this is what we're saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The, thank you. Yeah, verse 4, Hades will not overcome it. So death, Satan, anything, anything of Satan is not going to overcome the church. I will give you the keys of the kingdom. Now, it doesn't say the keys of heaven. It says of the kingdom, which is interesting. That if you look at what that word means, do you have it there, Billy? No, I'm sure you're able to throw it up though. <laughs> okay, yeah, he probably were. Um, well, that was a Jewish thing. Um, they, you, you know, so he's talking Jewish. Uh, he, you know, to the Jew, uh, he's talking a Jewish kind of language about heaven. They call it the kingdom of heaven instead right, of right. heaven. So, and he said that to Pilate. He said, you know, um, my kingdom is not of this world. Right. Right. So, so look, look at look at look in the Bible, Billy. Look at Revelation one eighteen. Revelation what? One eighteen. Okay. Let's see what it says. Yeah, Rev one eighteen. Hold on. Um, I'll give you another reason. If four verses later, just four verses later, he calls Peter Satan. And he says, "Get behind me, Satan." Right, right. So how could this guy? He 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 said, "You're blessed." Simon Barjona and you know blah blah blah. And I'm going to give you the keys, the kingdom, and I'm going to build it on this rock. And then he says, "Get behind me, Satan." Okay, so one what? One eighteen. Yeah. One eighteen says, "I am He who lives and was dead, and behold, I'm alive forever." Amen. And I have the keys of Hades and of death. Yeah. yeah. So so the keys so the keys are Jesus. The key Jesus is the one with the keys. The keys. It says that, yes. Right? So Jesus is the one that has the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And by the way, so, that Hades is unequivocally the Hades you were talking about. That's not death. He wouldn't say I have the keys of death and death. He's saying right. I have the keys of that place. Yes, that place. And death. Right, right. Yes. Right. So so what are the keys of the king, the kingdom of heaven that, that Jesus gives to Peter? Well, I think this is I think this is it. I think it's the gospel of Jesus Christ. <laughs> I agree. I think it's the gospel. Uh, I think because Jesus has the keys, he says in Revelation, he has the keys. He says he's holding those keys. And so, and, and he tells us here that he's going to give these keys to Peter. So what does a key do? A key opens a door, right? It's, it opens your heart and mind. It, yeah. You know, first of all, you're very contextual here because he starts the conversation, who am I? Right. You're Jesus the Christ. He goes, by the way, you weren't told that you're an idiot anyway, but on that, <laughs> you on, that. he doesn't say that, but he says <laughs> on this little stone, on this little tiny Peter, I'm going to build my church on that statement. Right. And I'm going to give you the keys to that, which is he, we know that it's a simple thing to come to heaven. I mean, it, you have to do it in your heart, but you have to believe Jesus who says he is. Isn't that the only way to heaven? Right. That's right. it. Yeah, the, the, yeah, we already said that. The only way you're going to get to the heaven, is, so the key to heaven, the key to the key, the key to the kingdom of heaven, is the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's faith or believing. I don't know yeah, what you want to call it's, it. Well, it's the gospel. I tell you the truth about Christ, and neither you accept it and walk through the door and, or not. <laughs> right. Okay. And then my walk determines if I really did it. You know, the seed yeah. is planted, yeah. and it either takes root or it doesn't. Right. So so what he's saying here is th what he's telling Peter is the same thing that he's telling us. And I really want us to get this. He wants us to know the privilege we have and the responsibility and the, the heaviness and the weightiness of what we're responsible for. You think about that. Think about what we're responsible for. We have as Christians, we have given been also given the keys to the kingdom of heaven. We have, we're the ones who get to share with other people the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're the ones who come to this place and say, look, you need to know Jesus and we need to tell you the truth about Christ. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Truly, truly, I say unto you, he who believes has eternal life. Look, you need to accept Christ. It's not in Ephesians 2, 8, 9, not by works, but by faith, lest anyone think they do it on their own. And that's a paraphrase, but that's what it says. And so the bottom line is this, you need to accept Christ. That's the key to heaven. Heaven. The key to heaven is opening up the door, showing the gospel of Christ, showing who Christ is, and inviting you, uh, as well as the Holy Spirit inviting you at the same time you speak it, inviting you into heaven, into the kingdom of heaven. 
then that's what Paul, that's what Jesus is giving Peter. And Do we, you know how far away you are from Catholic theology? No, I, I understand. Well, you, I, I mean, my gosh, it, I mean, I, you're, I think it's all right on, but you, you just threw a, you just threw the Roman Catholic uh, theology and Looney Tunes <laughs> under the bus where they've got Peter on a cloud, you know, because that's the way they read it. They read it. He's the first pope. He's yeah. got the keys. He's letting you in. And hello, Peter, can I come in? That's yeah. and you're not even close to that. But I, but I agree with you wholeheartedly with this. Yeah. Luann wrote, she thinks, and which is what you said, but she said, I believe the key to heaven is this. Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, the life. Yeah. Yeah. Same thing. Same thing. That's Absolutely. it. Yeah. It's, yeah. And we could find it in the Bible over and over and over again. Right, right. So, so, so sometimes when, when you're, when you're looking at a certain concept in scripture, you need to ask yourself what it's not so that you can determine what it is. And so what you do is you say, okay, these are what people say it is. So it, it, can it be this? Ask, you know, think about it, open it up. Can it be this? Can it be this? Can it? Well, no, it can't because of this. And it can't because of this. So it must be this. So that that's how that's how you could determine it. So and and the best the best commentary I can say it a million times it's true. The best commentary on scripture is scripture. That's the best commentary. Excuse me. So the kingdom of the keys to the kingdom of heaven are the, is the gospel of Jesus Christ. I really believe that's what this is talking about. And, and I think that nine out of ten Christians who come to the Lord honestly see it that way. If they're not being misled, the one that bothered Luann when she first read the Bible was. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Because that was like, what does that mean? You know, that's a tough one. And I agree. Yeah. I mean, that, I have an explanation, but it is tough. Yeah. Well, what does it mean? What do you think? What what, what does that mean then? Because that's the next that's the next conversation. If well, I would say that, well, kingdom, first of all, when we say amen, and we say amen a lot, what we're saying is we agree with God. So when I say I'm a sinner, I'm agreeing with God. He says I'm a sinner. Well, I want to agree with what God says about me. Right. So when God says that if somebody rejects him, that they're, they are an unrepentant sinner, if God says an unrepentant sinner is going to hell, we don't say, well, there is no hell, like the Jehovah's Witnesses would say. Or right. when someone says, I accept Jesus. And and, and so we, we bind and loose. Um, I don't know that it's church discipline. Maybe it is. It could be. I mean, it could be a lot of things like that. But I think generally what God has already said in heaven, this is the way and this is not the way. And we're just saying this, we're agreeing here. I kind of see it that way. Yeah. What, you know, we're, we're going to bind evil and we're going to loose good. And every time we're salt and light, we push away the darkness and we bring in uh, the truth. It's a truth and lie, the kind of thing. So, um, but, but I've seen a lot of things on this. Okay. Uh, this, this, this has to relate to what we just read. Yes. Yeah, it has to relate to that. So, so when you have a key to something, when I have a key to my to a car, I have authority to use that car because <laughs> yeah. I can start it. It it so I so there's a there's a sense when Jesus tells Peter he has the keys to the kingdom of heaven, he's telling him about his authority. He's giving him a conversation about the gospel and what authority he has to use the gospel look you have to be given an authority by christ to use the gospel you, you that's why i said a little earlier it's you along with the holy spirit calling just because you shared the gospel doesn't mean anybody's going to get saved the only person that gets saved is somebody who was called by god through the holy spirit right. when that happens so there's an authority that happens there's there is a movement of the hand of heaven Think about this. There's a movement of the hand of heaven towards you and towards those you speak to when you share the gospel of Christ. And it's authority that has been given to us to use. So we have the authority. So when we speak, the Holy Spirit moves. That's what you have to understand. When you speak the gospel of Jesus Christ, when I say, truly, truly, I say unto you, he who believes has eternal life. I have just released the authority of, of heaven, <laughs> uh, the hand of God. I've just released the authority of God on those people, which is you that I'm speaking to and me. It's both. Let me tell you why. Because when I speak out of my, my mouth, I hear what I say as well right. as you hear what I say. So anybody within the hearing distance of my voice, 
there's an authority that's all that's taking place in an unseen world that's happening when I speak. Doesn't Jesus say, and how do I know that? Doesn't Jesus say, no one comes into the Father except drawn by me? Yes. You cannot get to the Father except God, the Holy Spirit, Jesus draws them. That's the only way you're going to say yes to Christ. Well, the loosing and binding thing, when Paul says he pulls down every pretension, aren't we binding when we do that? Yes, uh, yes, and, yes. And is it, isn't that bound in First of all, what did God bind in heaven? He bound the demons and sent them away. And we have that same loosing and binding. And yes. they're, loose, they're loose here on the earth. We know that. He, there's a roaring right. lion and there's right. demonic stuff all over. Right. We'll right. just look around. But we can tear down pretensions against false philosophy, Socrates, like you say, all that. And we're binding it. It's already bound in heaven. Heaven doesn't believe in Socrates and false philosophies, but we're binding it here on earth. So we're, what I meant was we're agreeing with right. what heaven says about Socrates, what heaven says about false teachers. And mm -hmm. if we don't, like my sister said, if we just continue to be ecumenical and nice and we don't bind those bad philosophies here, we're not agreeing with heaven. Right. And we have an authority to bind them, don't we? Well, we have the authority and we have the responsibility. Both. Okay, yes, yes. Yes, yeah. Th so so this, is, this is really a responsibility conversation, but it's not a responsibility. It's not like you gave somebody the responsibility of running a company, but not an authority to do anything. So you, you're just like a, you're like a right. straw man doing that. No. This, Jesus is here giving authority and responsibility, but he's saying, I'm giving you the keys of heaven, the kingdom of heaven. I'm giving them to you. I'm giving you the gospel. The key, the key is the gospel. I'm giving that to you. But I'm also not just giving you the responsibility to share it. I'm giving you the authority behind the responsibility so it will be effectual. And so whatever you, whatever you bind on earth is going to be bound because you have authority to do that. And whatever you loose on earth is going to be loose because you have authority to do that. So we should be loosing the Holy Spirit and the gospel and binding the enemy. When my yeah. mom asked me about Jesus... Yeah. Yes. I said, let me tell you the, you know, let me tell you the bad news first. I think we give people the good news. We have to give them the bad news that they're sinners. We have to bind right. that pride and that the thing that they stand against God. We have to right. bind that and then they, before they can hear you. And then right. you lose the good news. Right. So yeah, I totally agree with you. That's what this is. But boy, has this been misrepresented? <laughs> well, lots yeah. of people. That, yeah, there's been a lot of conversation. Well, because if it. you just read it, right? Then, you know, I wouldn't call. You know, it's yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, 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 I'm not trying to proof text it here. I'm not trying to make it fit into something. It's not. I just want to find the message of it and then let that message be the guide guidance of whatever we're going to do. But you're, it. but you're using scripture to do that because yeah. you yeah. have scripture all over your head like I do. So you know this can't be Peter saying I'm going to bind you know anything. I'm not going to let you come into heaven or I'm it not going to. Yeah. Yes, he no doesn't way. have that authority. That he that authority he does not have. No. Only God has that authority. And we see that in scripture. So anyway, there's Whether been a he sits in a chair or not. Right, 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 right. Right. So so the po the point of this whole thing is you have to know what it is so that because you're responsible for it. See, that's that's one of the things you don't know probably. You're resp you you have been given the same responsibility. And how do I know that? Because I go back to the very conversation of the Great Commission. What's our job? Our job is to do what? Our job is to go make disciples. So you can't make disciples unless they become Christians, <laughs> right? You have to do evangelism before you do discipleship because evangelism is telling evangelon the, the, the good news. You have to tell the good news and you have authority and you have the responsibility and you have every power because with authority comes power. You, do, do you understand that? With the authority comes power. That's Isn't that what they even look all the way back to where we started this conversation in, in, in the, in the fifth chapter, when we talked about the sermon on the Mount and he came off of the mountain after he spoke and what was their comment? He speaks with such authority, Right. Mm -hmm. And we saw in Revelation 118 that Jesus has the keys. And because he has the keys, he can give them to anybody he wants. <laughs> and they're his. They belong to him. You know, we can make this pretty personal because plenty of households. personal. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm going to make it even yeah. more. Plenty of households in America, there's a lot of stuff being loosed through the TV, through the mm -hmm. Internet, through music. And the fathers in that household have the authority to bind it. And right. they're not. 
Right. And so you, you, you wonder, why is my life like this? Why is my marriage like Why are my kids like this? Why don't you take the authority to bind what's already been bound in heaven here on earth? Agree with God that these are bad things and bind them. Right. And, and I don't know if, you, if, if people watching know that they have that power or that authority. No, I, I don't think that we do. I don't think that we operate in that. And this is part of what I'm talking about when I'm saying we need to come back to church differently than when we left. Yes. We yes. need to come back with this understanding. We're coming back with this conversation about, look, we have this authority and we have authority to, to when we agree with God, he gives us his authority. When we agree with God that something is bad, it's bad. When we agree with God that something is sinful, it's sinful. When we agree with God that something is holy, it's holy. And it's not because when we agree with it, it makes it that way. It's because God said it was, and we're just agreeing with him. But when we agree with him, he puts a mantle of his authority on us to be able to continue that conversation in this world and in another world. That's you know? exactly what I said to start this, only you said it much better. That's exactly what I'm saying. You know, yeah. and I, I'll say something about the church, and I've only been in the church seven minutes, you know, because what is 30 years? And <laughs> But the church that I see has been trying to fill up the seats evangelizing with people. What a revival does, and, and these people just continue to not know their authority, not know the Lord, we'll call yes. it reform. But a revival would be bringing in people who are hot and take authority immediately, and then the church would, would grow naturally and it would explode. Yes, We're doing it backwards. We yes, know. absolutely, perfect. Yeah. Say that yeah. again. If you can say that again, you should, because that's well, really no, but, I, but but that's you know, I I love the church, but the, but we but a revival would be a revival in people's hearts, so they would, you know, we wouldn't just reach out and say bring in. We want everyone. Then the people who are lukewarm would be reached because they'd see the power of the church, the authority yeah. of the church. They'd yeah. see the love of the church. Yeah. They wouldn't see the hypocrisy of, and all that. Right. The church has become, you've called it a sleeping giant. It's very weak right now, very sure. weak. But it doesn't have to be. No. It doesn't need to be. And it's not, and it's not because God wants it to be. No. You see, this is this this scripture is so important for us because what it's saying to us is look, I'm giving you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. With that key comes a responsibility. With that key comes a privilege. With that key comes authority. And I want you to use it. Now, the, what's the key? The key is the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm giving you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. What's the key? The key is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And then what you do with that is you, you, you have some people changed inwardly and they're on fire for Christ. And they, they, don't, they don't have to go around asking all the time, what do you want me to do, God? There's just going to be these things that open up in front of them and they're going to run to that ministry. And that's what we're supposed to be like. That's what God created. It's just it's it, the thing. It's if, the you to read, if you want to read someone who used this authority, and you don't need to read these, but Paul with the church yes. at Corinth absolutely yes. bound things and said this is wrong, and he came in very strong. Yes. And then if you want to see what he did in Ephesus with Timothy, he wrote letters to Timothy. He said, you do that. I know yes. you're young, but do that. Yes. And you have the same authority in your house and with your children, with your husband, and you know, in your marriage. You just do. Yeah, and Timothy 2.2. Second Timothy 2 Timothy 2.2, it says that you're supposed to teach these things who can teach these things, who can teach these things, who can teach these things, who can teach these things. Which is what we're doing now, sort of. No, it is exactly what we're doing now. If they're here. Yeah, yeah, but but it's it's not like we're supposed to just say, okay, that was good for them, and that's wonderful for Peter, but that doesn't apply to me. That's yeah. not what this Bible's telling us. No. This Bible's telling us that this applies to us as well. And there are many places in scripture that you can know that. One of them is John 17, which is the prayer of Jesus that says, not just to these I ask this, but to those who will believe in their message. Right. So it's the same conversation. And, and if you look at this, the, the question you have to ask, we have one minute and we'll just ask it. The question you have to ask is, did this become evident in Peter's life? And the answer is absolutely not yes. four verses later, but, you know, maybe a while later. Well, after 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 if the you whole, knew if you knew that Hydra, I can't pronounce that word. Hydra. Uh, oh, you would yeah. think would, and you had COVID and would get rid of it. You wouldn't care if you're a Republican or Democrat. You'd take it. And right. if you knew that your marriage could be fixed and your children could behave if you took the authority and bound what's uh, in heaven, bound it here on earth. Wouldn't you do that? Yeah. Why would you do that. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of instead of instead of really, 
but being, you're complaining about it or well, being destroyed by it. That's what yeah. happens, right? Yes, get, yes, we, yes. Destroyed. We Good become word. destroyed by those things. It, it just ruins us. Yep. It, 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 it ruins us. I don't know how else to say it, but instead of becoming ruined, take the authority that God has given you and use it. Now, it doesn't mean it'll be easy, and it doesn't no. mean that things are going to change instantly. But no, they you have consequences for your sin, but you know, I think of the Wizard of Oz. Do you know, you know the adventures of Dorothy? She went through a lot of stuff, and all she had to do was click her heels. And yeah. when she said, I have to click my heels, she went home. It was yeah. that simple. God is not a difficult master. He's that easy, but a lot of times we're not following what he tells us to do. We're not taking the authority he gave us. We're right, just right, right. So this goes back to the authority that you have in Christ, and, and we have been told by Christ to do the same thing that he's telling Peter to do here. And, and he's not going to say to you, Billy, I want you to go out and do this, but you don't have any authority to do it. Mm -hmm. You don't have any power in it. You don't have anything. I just want you to go out there and get the snot beat out of you because I, I think yeah. that's going to be funny. That's not the Christ you serve, right? That's not you just, you just described the church, though. What's that? You've described today's church a little bit. No, no, we. That, I know. I a understand. Nice guy. That. Yes, yes. I, yeah, yeah. I get it. <laughs> right, but 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 we don't have to live like that. No. And and ministry is not. It it is, but it's not merely. It's not exclusively uh, attached to teaching a Sunday school class or being on a board or or you know buying supplies for for the church or what. I mean, a lot of people call those things ministry. They are. They are ministry thing. Feeding people with food boxes. Those are all ministry. But the ministry that's being talked about here is an authority and a power that you can change people's lives with. And yeah, I think you're talking doing. about the seen world versus the unseen. And Jesus is always talking about spiritual. There's a spiritual battle that a lot of people ignore. And so you feed a person or you buy some crayons or you teach. But the spiritual aspect is what needs to change. We need to change from the inside. The spiritual battle is far. What does a man get if he forfeits his soul and gains the whole world? You right. gain a thousand lunches, but you you know you don't know the Jesus. It's the inside. Satan is not. He'll let you eat all you want. He'll let you go to church all you want. He doesn't want you to change spiritually. There's the battle. Well, we'll ask yourself a question, dear Christian, Billy, everybody, me, ask ourselves a question. Has my life changed because of Christ? Is there something different about me now than before I knew Christ? Look, if there isn't, then you need to reintroduce yourself to Christ. <laughs> <laughs> but if there is, then ask yourself a question. Why wouldn't I want that for everybody's life that I know? Yeah. You know, that's the that's the conversation. And it's the conversation that Peter is being brought into by Jesus. Amen. All Amen. right. Well, we're we're three minutes past. I'm so sorry. This is a very fun conversation for me. We'll get back to verse 20 tomorrow, probably rehash a little bit about this and then go right into some more conversation about this binding and loosing of what it means for us and how we're supposed to do it. And, you know, what kinds of things it means and what kinds of things does it not mean? That's important, too. Remember, we talked about that today. Listen, you're God's favorite. He loves you. You are so blessed by him. Billy, you're God's favorite, but so am I. We'll see you tomorrow.